And with that, we do want to bring in our NBC10 political commentator, Sue O'Connell, to join me now. So, Sue, as we mark one year since the Hamas-led terror attack on Israel, there is a threat of conflict continuing to grow even further there in the Middle East, with the war in Gaza still raging and Israel launching a new offensive in Lebanon. Meanwhile, at home, with the election ending in less than a month now, what are the implications for this on the race for president? Right, acknowledging the anniversary today, Priscilla, but also talking about it from a purely political viewpoint, right? The ongoing and growing conflicts are bad for both parties, and by extension, Vice President Harris and former President Trump. On the Democratic side, current President Joe Biden has failed to pressure Israel to agree to a ceasefire. And Biden also wanted to avoid Israel bombing Lebanon. And many Palestinians don't view Biden as a fair broker because of his lifelong support of Israel. So it's fair to say the Biden administration has failed to at least contain the conflict, and that reflects poorly on Harris. And on the Republican side, when Trump was president, Trump laid some foundations for this crisis. Iran is a major player in this chaos, with its allies in Lebanon being Hezbollah and its ally in Gaza being Hamas. Trump withdrew from the Iran nuclear deal, which further damaged relations between the U.S. and Iran. Trump's support of the far-right politics of Israel and his recognition of Jerusalem as Israel's capital, that made clear that Palestinians were on the outside of this American policy. That's bad for his campaign. Well, the Anti-Defamation League says that anti-Semitic incidents in the U.S. increased 200 percent since the October 7th attack. Do you think the candidates are talking enough about anti-Semitism? I know we've seen it in our own backyard. Yeah, I, I mean, I think one is <laughs> Vice President Harris and Second Gentleman Douglas Emhoff. They were just making remarks today together on the anniversary. Well, they developed the first ever national strategy to counter anti-Semitism. And the second gentleman is Jewish, and he has been in an elevated role, both here and abroad, uh, rallying people to fight against anti-Semitism. Now, Donald Trump, his daughter Ivanka, is Jewish. His grandchildren are Jewish. But on the other hand, He's offered what can only be charitably called questionable comments. In September, Trump said that, quote, the Jewish people would have a lot to do, end quote, with his loss if he loses in November. He also indicated that any Jewish person who votes for Harris, quote, should have their head examined, end quote, and that he has also said he has not been, quote, treated properly by those voters who happen to be Jewish, end quote. He said that, citing that he did a lot for Israel, which forwards an anti-Semitic trope that Jewish Americans have dual loyalties, right, to the U.S. and to Israel. That sort of toxic rhetoric can feed anti-Semitism. Well, Sue, over the weekend, on Saturday, thousands of people blocked Storo Drive during a pro-Palestinian rally. And we've seen interviews with people saying that they support Israel, but are alarmed at 42,000 Palestinian deaths and then the growing humanitarian crisis in Gaza. How are the candidates addressing these voters? You know, Priscilla, it's easy to fall into a, a trap of reporting about conflicts in the Middle East as people fitting neatly into and completely into different categories, right? But many United States voters want the hostages to be free, believe Israel has the right to defend itself, and also mourn the deaths and conditions of the civilians in Gaza. And since becoming the Democratic nominee for president, Harris has made several statements about, she did it again today, supporting Israel and saying that the world must also pay attention to what's happening in Gaza. Today, she said with her husband, uh, quote, we must uphold the commitment to repair the world. And of course, Harris is polling really well among Jewish voters. And also at the same time, she was endorsed today by Muslim faith leaders. Now, Trump has said that Israel should, quote, finish the job. And he's avoided saying he would support an independent Palestinian state. And the Council on American-Islamic Relations accused Trump of using a slur in his Biden debate. So the voters are going to have to decide which one of those two candidates is speaking to them. Yeah, they certainly will. Sue, we appreciate you so much. Thank you. Don't forget the recap of all of the week's big political headlines. It happens every Sunday on At Issue. You can join Sue at Corey Smith and Matt Pritchard. It airs at 1130 immediately following Meet the Press. All right, everyone. Still to come here at 430.